Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey from GavTrain.com and you're watching my top five favorite new features of Photoshop CS6 Beta. Okay, now number one of my top five features is this rather nice new dark interface. It really sets off your pictures beautifully so they, they do stand out and really glow. Now you can change it, you can go to edit, down to preferences and choose interface and you'll find there are actually four color schemes so there is the dark color theme there is the uh, the sort of next one in which is my favorite and the one I tend to use there is the brighter one and there's the original color scheme from Photoshop as well so I'll go with that color theme right there okay so that's my favorite color theme but what about things to do with your images well number two on my list and I should say these are in absolutely no particular order is the ability to move things around on the image now I know what you're thinking you're thinking hang on a minute Gavin I've been able to move things around on my images for years yeah you can but now we have a brand new tool and it is rather good it is the content aware move tool now there are two versions of this tool there's move and there's extend we'll have a, a longer look at uh, the two options in another video but for now we'll just use the move option and all I'm going to do is just drag a really really rough selection oh boy that's rough rough selection around her like that now all I need to do is just to drag her off to the side and as soon as I drag I get a copy of that selection and it kind of floats around until I let go of the mouse it floats and when I let go then what it'll do is it'll analyze what should go in the original selection and fill it in with content aware and also feather up the edges of the uh, the move that I did here as well and if you don't like the way that it fills in the edges here there's the ability to change the adaption of the edges um, but that looks pretty good that'll do for now okay so number three on my top five list are the new filters so I've made a copy of that uh, layer and then I can go and have a look at the filters so there is actually five there's adaptive wide angle which I'll look at in another video and there's oil paint oil paint is great if you want to do this kind of oil painty effect uh, if you ever played with pixel bender that came with Photoshop CS5 where well, it didn't come with it it was an optional plugin um, but if you've played with pixel bender then you'll be very familiar with this effect so uh, that gives a very nice kind of painterly effect and the reason I did that on its own layer is because I can add a new layer mask and get a paintbrush and just reveal the original photo below, just like that. Okay, so that's one of the new filters. It's very nice, but there are a couple more that are worth looking at as well. Let's go to Filter, Blur, and there are three new Blur filters. Field Blur, Iris Blur, and Tilt Shift. Field Blur. Field Blur is, is a brilliant all-over blurring effect. It's, it isn't Gaussian Blur. It is much more photographic. It's more like a defocusing rather than a blurring. So even when I put it up quite high, you can still see what the image is. Okay, so it really is defocused rather than blurred. Now, the other one, let's have a little look at uh, Iris Blur. Let's fire that up. Iris Blur is very much like Field Blur, but this time you have a hole that's cut in. Okay, so it is a little iris that you can move around, position where you like. Uh, you can resize and reshape the iris to your heart's content. So I can drag it down. I can even change how round or square it is like so. Uh, there is this wonderful heads-up display that allows me to change the strength of the blurring effect. And I can go very, very strong. Uh, I can move the feathering. Okay, and so if we go and have a look at the edge here, I can move the feather points. So I can bring them in so I can have a much tighter edge and, and doesn't really blend very well. Or I can really blend that blurring effect in. Now you'll notice it redraws the image because the new blur filters make use of the graphics processor. Because this is really memory intensive. So it's using the graphics card to do the, uh, the effect live on screen. Okay, so that works very nicely indeed. Let's come out of that. And we'll have a look at the last one, but I think I'll bring a new image in for that one. Uh, yeah, here we go. So the last of the three blur filters is filter, blur, tilt, shift. And tilt, shift creates an effect that I've been doing for a long time in Photoshop. But I used to use a combination of different filters and layers and layer masks. Now it's just a simple filter, and it is much better than I used to do as well. So I can increase the amount of blurring, and what it does is it gives this kind of miniature idea with, with pictures like this, so it looks like this is a, a miniature railway. 
perfect image for this is one like this where I'm, I'm shooting down onto something but I've got extra features as well if I come over to the options bar I can turn on symmetric distortion and really pump up the distortion to to make this whole kind of miniature train thing really become much more convincing okay so that's tilt and shift now you'll notice that all of these blurring effects have a an extra option that is called blur effects so let's go and have a look at that see what that's all about so if I bring in a picture that doesn't look like it's got much potential, if I'm honest with you, it's a pretty rubbish picture, but I'm going to blur it. So filter, blur. I'm going to use field blur for this just to give everything a kind of a general blur. And when we turn on field blur and I go down to blur effects, I can find there is really only one effect. It's the bokeh effect. Now, as I increase the light bokeh, what I end up with is probably the least convincing bokeh you're ever going to see. But... It's always a but, isn't there? But to get this to work, you need to move the light range. So there are two sliders. There's the black slider and there's the white slider. And to make it look convincing, just bring the two sliders close together. As I bring them close together, you get that lovely kind of bokeh effect. I can control the bokeh effect. I can control the, the size of it by changing the amount of blur in here. So I've got lots of different control over the effect. I can even add in some color bokeh as well if I want to put a bit of color in there, make it that kind of disco-y look. Now you might be thinking, yeah, but why would I want to do that? Well, particularly on a picture like this, but keep watching and you'll see a very good reason why in just a moment. OK, I'll hit the OK button and we'll render that blurring out. It just takes a moment or two. There it is. Now, I like that, but I don't like these corners at the top. So I'm going to remove the corners by using the spot healing brush. Now, OK, the spot healing brush isn't new inside of Photoshop CS5. Well, it was new in CS5. It's not new inside of CS6 beta. It always had a problem. It often would do something like that. It just didn't quite work. When it worked, it's brilliant, but when it didn't, it wasn't so good. Well, now in CS6 Beta, we have the patch tool, which has been added with content aware ability. And this is amazing. I can draw around an area like that, and rather than letting Photoshop decide where it should clone in, I'm just going to say clone in from here. And it just works. And it, um, Honestly, it is absolutely brilliant. I can just go and select an area and it just works. Fabulous. OK, we're going to come back to that image in just a minute. But you're probably thinking, yeah, that's great, but I'm not going to clone in skies very often. Show me something a bit more challenging. Well, here we go. Uh, portrait and uh, she's got a couple of hairbands on. I don't really like the hairbands. That wasn't part of the plan. So I'll try and remove them using the spot healing brush. Yep, OK, so my first tool of choice is the spot healing brush. Let's go and see if it works. And what happens is, no, it doesn't. In fact, it makes a right mess of the image. And that's what happened with the spot healing brush. Sometimes it didn't work. Well, now I can swap to the patch tool. And I can just draw around here with the patch tool. Round we go. And I can choose where I want my sample point to be. So rather than letting Photoshop to choose a sample point, I can say, well, choose a sample point from sort of well, down here somewhere would be good. And it'll sample in from there. Now, it needs a bit of tidying up, but you get the idea. That works really, really well. OK, now, uh, having done that, I'm just going to draw up the selection that I loaded up from previously. There we go, a selection. And uh, we'll just get the Move tool, and I'll just drag her off, and I'll drop her on. Yes, this picture right here. You see, I told you I'd come back to this picture. So I find the, the Blur tools to be extremely good for creating nice abstract backgrounds something like that and it has this wonderful abstract background look okay so number three on my top five list was the blurring tools and the filters number four was the new ability to use the patch tool with content aware what's number five well i think i've saved the best till last number five is the new raw features so if you're a photographer you're probably shooting and editing in raw and if you've had a chance to play around with Lightroom 4, you know that Lightroom 4's raw ability is better than Photoshop CS5's. Well, fortunately, in Photoshop CS6 beta, we have the same raw bought in to here in the beta. So I can now make changes here that I couldn't possibly imagine with the previous version of raw. So, for example, I can take the highlights of this image and take it all the way down and take the shadows and all the way up and really get into the detail of the shot. Now, this was actually one of three photos. This was an HDR sequence, and this was the middle. 
I shot this to make an HDR, but now if I keep moving my whites down and my blacks up, now I find I don't really need the the other two images. I can do the HDR effect right here, particularly as I can now take clarity, which I love by the way, and really max it out without getting any haloing on the image. We can just pull the exposure down a little bit and take the contrast up. And you can see how by taking it really to the extreme, and I'm not sure I'd recommend this on a day-to-day -day basis, but you can really get a difference between the original shot and working it through here in Adobe Camera Raw 7. Now, I'll take the, the vibrance up and the saturation up like that. Um, there are some new tools as well. If I go into the graduated filter, there's some new options here in graduated filter. And in the adjustment brush, I can now control the temperature of the brush as well, as well as having the, the contrast, uh, so the highlights and the shadows. So I've got some more stuff here. And even noise reduction, I can add in some noise reduction as well. So uh, I can control the noise where I put in my adjustment brushes and graduated filters. It's a whole new area to work on, and there will be a much more detailed video on that coming out. But for now, that gives you an idea that we can go from the original settings that just come in here. That was as shot through to something utterly different, and it really is quite amazing. So we'll bring that back into Photoshop CS6 Beta, and that rounds off my quick look at some of the new features of CS6 Beta. Thanks for watching.